Hey everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video. Yesterday we talked about five easy decks to hit legend with in standard and well, as promised, today we're going to go over five easy decks to get legend with in wild. Um, the decks here are definitely a heck of a lot different than what you'll see in standard. So if you don't know what wild's all about, well this might be a good starting point to kind of get yourself in there to rank up. So let's start with probably the most popular deck on ladder and again just like dragon hunter it's for good reason reno quest mage now this is a deck that focuses around the mage quest that's rotated a while not not the uh i don't even know what the one in standard is called because nobody plays it but open the way gate uh open the way gate is a quest that after you play six random or six spells that didn't start in your deck you get basically to play another turn with the uh, Time Warp. And the thing about uh, Time Warp is there's a card called Bargoth that allows you to cast, repeat a spell you've cast that turn. And it turns out when you play Bargoth and Time Warp, well, you don't just get an extra turn, you get two extra turns. So, so this deck is built around that combo. You play Bargoth, you slam an Arcane Giant, you slam down a Mana Giant, and you have 16, 18 damage alone, and in two turns, you're gonna get there. You can even use Zephyrus, um, afterwards to mass dispel a bunch of taunts if you need be. So the deck, um, there's, I'm going over the Reno Quest Mage variant. There's also a regular Quest Mage variant that's more about hard cycling and getting to this combo a lot faster, whereas Reno Quest Mage is a more defensive deck. We're going to go over Reno Quest Mage primarily because it's a lot more straightforward to play. Um, it has a much better time against aggressive decks, which you'll be facing a lot of on your climb to Legend. And yeah, just relatively more straightforward to play and probably more consistent, especially for a newer player. And why is that? Well, there's the Highlander cards that really carry you in against the aggressive matchups. You have, like I said earlier, Zephyrus, the uh, two mana three two, get a perfect card that can give you removal, heal, silence, polymorph, whatever you need, it'll get you there. You have Reno the Relicologist, which is six, the uh, six mana four six, deal ten damage to enemy minions. Um, just super strong anti-aggro card, can clear a lot of stuff, just super good. Um, you have Reno Jackson, classic Reno, restore your health to full. Well, don't need to tell you why that's super powerful. You're at one health or anything like that, all of a sudden you're at 30 health. That's pretty good. And it goes really well with Ice Block. That's right, Ice Block. This favorite card, basically you, you, you are immune once you take lethal damage for a turn so your opponent can get you down to one but then you can reno up and heal to full you can even play your quest reno heal to full take the board and win the game um, there's just so many different options you also have kazak is another highlander card which is can give you several different potions that can clear the board draw your cards gain you armor resurrect minions polymorph the deck has basically everything you could want and it can basically beat everything on the ladder um, you'll you'd be curious to note that a couple Highlander cards actually don't make, make the list um, right now, and one of them being Dragon Queen Alexstrasza. You'd think it would be a fit, but it's just too slow. In Wild, you're, by turn 9, you want to be playing Bargoth Giant or killing your opponent, and Dragon Queen, although a very good card in many Highlander decks, just doesn't make the cut. There are other quest mages, Reno quest mages, that run the Dragon Package, but I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think they're quite as good, and they're more they're more fun. They uh, let you do greedier stuff, but don't recommend it. So th this deck is very solid, lots of stuff to do, but it's still pretty much play and curve, combo your opponent, win the game. So, we got through Arena Quest Mage. What's the next deck we're going to talk about? A classic, the one of my Agro Master's favorite decks, Odd Paladin. Yeah, that's right, Baku, our old friend, reemerges here, and he is still very good and wild, believe it or not. Um, Baku... If you only play odd cards, you get an upgraded hero power, which gives you two recruits every time you click that button. And with uh, newer cards recently added to the deck, such as uh, Righteous Cause, the side quest in Paladin that sees barely any play in, in Standard is super powerful in this deck. Um, it's just a very underrated deck in, in Wild, and I, I have a friend, Ghost Dog, who's done very well getting high legend with this and getting very fast legend. And... It's a relatively straightforward deck to play. Play your one drop, hit the hero power. Play your three drop, hit the hero power, and uh, then play Quartermaster and win. Um, your power cards, you know, you have Steward of Darkshire, 3-3 three, three protects your minions, giving them Divine Shield. You have Righteous Protector, 1-1 one, one Divine Shield Taunt, just very good early game card. 
you have faceless corruptor which is a more recent addition as well which just you're, you're gonna have dudes all around so you always have a target and it's very strong and then of course yes quarter cor, um, quartermaster buffing your your all your paladin dudes and just making it an unkillable wave uh, you can tech in an owl if you're seeing a lot of void lords but overall just very straightforward player cards make your board strong try and play around clears where you can if you got divine favor in your hand dump your cards so you can try and draw a bunch and um yeah just very solid deck not too much to go over on it but if you want to get legend grind some odd paladin you'll probably get there next deck on the list is possibly the best deck in wild the most consistent and strong deck um, it's been taken to rank one legend on multiple servers all over the place just a very very solid deck and very easy to play as bots regularly hit legend with it as well that would be even shaman with the totem based even shaman that's right totemic might in a tier one deck see it here first on um, this deck has just been super powerful it's really come through the last month or so um it really emerged you know, on, on North, like North America once it showed up on a Chinese meta snapshot as one of the top rated decks and um, it doesn't go for so much the big boys like the prior even shaman builds would just make four mana seven sevens and really focus on that this one is more totem based so you have evil totem you have totem golem and you have your hero power and then of course the one of the newer additions to the deck is splitting axe Four mana, three, two weapon, battle cry. Give your, uh, duplicate all your, make a copy, whatever, of your totems on the board. And in standard, that's pretty bad, but when your totems cost zero, one mana, it's pretty good. Plus, you can play Totemic Might to buff them, make them almost unkillable. And then you give them Totemic Surge, giving them attacks. So you have these unkillable totems that you just keep buffing. Basically, if you have turn one, hero power, turn two, totem golem, and then... Uh, and, and another totem the next turn and you have totemic might surge into the weapon you're just you've won the game like barely any decks can deal with it even warlock warlock struggles with it because defile won't hit it they need to have enough minions to plague you so it's a very powerful deck um they have another recent addition of squall hunter the four mana five seven overload two dragon with spell damage plus two extremely powerful with maelstrom portal that is three aoe plus if you got a spell damage totem then it's just I, I've had boards where I'm playing my my uh, I'm playing quest mage with eight eight giants and they get cleared by by squall hunter, it's insane, and of course you have the staples like devolve which let you get through taunts, crackle for your end game burn, and um, some people like to tech in those uh, stormbringers for well your totems aren't doing much play stormbringer get get a bunch of crazy legendaries, and of course one of the most powerful cards in the deck is. Thing from below six mana five five taunt costs one for less for each totem you summon this game and basically by turns three and four this thing's costing zero with the, all your way of duplicating totems and just you know you're clicking that button so super strong deck and very easy to pilot um the only thing that's really kind of finicky with it is timing your totemic might and your totemic surge how much value you're going to extract on it how greedy it can be or how not greedy you want to be you want to be aggressive so have to kind of figure that one out but overall the deck is pretty straightforward to play and will definitely show you good results next deck on the list is a personal favorite of mine as in i cannot stand the deck i wish it didn't exist and it drives me crazy but heck it's a super powerful deck it's pretty autopilot in a lot of ways and you can just high roll your opponents to victory and get yourself um that legend card back that would be darkest hour warlock so darkest hour if you're a standard player you're like that you don't even realize that's a standard card but is this this whole deck is centered around it it is a six mana spell it destroys all of your friendly minions and summons that many minions from your deck randomly well when you have a card like blood bloom which allows you to use your health instead of mana to play darkest hour you can play reform scheme for three mana and then play blood bloom for two mana and then cheat out darkest hour and all of a sudden you have a colossus of the of the moon a yasharaj a void lord malganus nerubian web unraveler kill to zad on the board on turn five heck you can get this combo active on turn three with the coin if you have two blood blooms in hand you can blood bloom fiendish circle blood bloom darkest hour you have four cheetah minions you're gonna win the game it's just it's an insane combo 
And, you know, you have war your Warlock, you have Life Tap to get you there. Um, you have Void Caller still with Void Caller and the Void Lord to get you there. You can Sack Pack your Void Caller to, to heal and cheat out your Taunt. And then you have the best early game removal in the game with Plague of Flames and Sinister Steel. You get your cheap lackeys and then Plague of Flames the board and kill off your um, opponent's board. And then you have Defile, which can kill most things. And the another very powerful clear is Dark Skies, which clears most boards as well. So... You have the best early game board clears, and you have the most broken mana cheat combo in the game. It's a very strong deck. Um, it can just auto win without any input for the most part. Just play that Blood Bloom combo, and you're good to go. So, as I always said, any deck that runs Void Color or Void Lord is going to be a strong deck, and that when you have an insane broke back combo to go with it, it's going to do some serious damage. I hate the deck. I wish it didn't exist, but it does. So take advantage of it. You won't regret it. Just please don't queue into me. And last on the list, but certainly not least, control the board's favorite deck, Pirate Warrior. This deck has really seen a, a push lately on ladder. It is very popular due to the prevalence of mage and to the extent Warlock is it's aggressive enough. It can kill Warlocks fast. Um, it's just classical Pirate Warrior. Um, it's, it's had some recent additions, so you still... Um, more most recently from Descender Dragons we have Ankar still even though nerfed it's still very good because um although in wild or in standard you only have upgrade and not that many good pirates to go with it you still have blood sail cultist in wild three mana three four pirate as long as you have another pirate on the board you can upgrade it and you can you can easily keep your uh, Ankar going you're drawing every turn and in, in this deck that is absolutely broken because you have things going on like ship's cannon which you can just win the game typically on turns two and three, depending. You have ship's cannon and a, a one drop, and you cheat out a couple of uh, par parachute brigands. You're, you're just gonna win. You're gonna deal a billion damage. You're gonna build a huge board, and then you can snowball with you follow up with South Sea Captain and your weapon and your Dread Corsair. Uh, you can cheat out Frenzy Fellwing, which is a new recent addition to the deck as well. And the deck can just it has some of the most explosive openers you can see. Um, cheats mana. Same pirate synergy, smork, smork, smork. Your games are going to be quick. You're going to win fast. You're going to lose fast, but you're going to win fast. So it's a very uh, good deck to play to get that legend as fast as possible. And um, it's relatively straightforward to play. Play your one drop, play your ship's cannon. Sometimes hold the one drop for your ship's cannon. Hit the weapon, go face, go face. Hit that face. Um, you have your finishers and Leroy, Corcoran Elite, Mortal Strike. And of course, you have the ever versatile Sir Finley Mergleton to get you that new hero power. With typically the best hero powers being a Steady Shot from Hunter and Life Tap from Warlock, because you can sometimes run out of cards, especially if you haven't drawn your end card. So very good, consistent aggro deck, but uh, it should get you there. And you know who doesn't like to go face, right? Uh, so those are the five easier decks to play to hit Legend. I'm gonna give. An honorable mention to the deck that I've been spamming like crazy because, well, I just like broken, non-interactive, degenerate stuff. So I'm going to give a shout out to regular Quest Mage, which, as you can see, is significantly different than Reno Quest Mage. It's all about cycle, 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 and you got your Flame Wakers in there. So the main difference being if Sorcerer's Apprentice, you have Flame Waker, you have Research Project, you have um, uh, Stargazer Luna, which... I not entirely sure it's not in every reading quest range, but you have all this hyper cycle and you have your magic tricks and basically you want to get your uh, the main strategy is find sorcerer's apprentice find mana cyclone find flame waker use them all in one turn on five mana evocation deal a million damage clear the board get a bunch of spells and then the next turn you're basically quest complete and you can cheat out a couple giants and finish your opponent and if worse comes to worse well turn nine you got bargoth quest completion time warp and uh, kill your opponent the main reason that this deck is not an easier one to play is you have to be really really careful with when you go in on your girl turns when you get with wake or when you play research project all these things it's a very finicky deck um but i i recently have uh, been top three legend with it i've been top 10 legend with it on na and eu um recently language hacker who's a grand master one of the best players in the world dabbled in wild and took the deck and i had some absurd win rate like 45 and three or something some uh, i'll post it right right you'll see you'll see but it he did crazy stuff 
if it's in the right hands, it can do some incredible stuff. So if you're if you're feeling like more of a challenge, then I definitely recommend this deck. And lastly, another mage deck I will mention, but will not encourage nor explain, but is a very powerful deck that I would be silly not to mention. But Secret Mage, the deck's broken. It's really good. I'll leave a deck code in the description below, but I hate the deck. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want people playing it. I think Quest Mage is degenerate. I think Darkest Hour Warlock is degenerate. But Secret Mage, I just don't want nothing to do with that one. So You'll get Legend playing it, though, I'm almost certain. But, ugh, can't stand it. So, those are five easy, wild decks to take to Legend with a couple other decks mentioned at the end. But hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave again, as we did prior video, uh, deck codes in the description. These are not from HS Replay. These are from Vicious Syndicate. Um, they had a much more uh, in-depth lists and descriptions of stuff. So if you want to check out Vicious Syndicate's latest Wilds meta snapshot, that will be in the description below. Um, can give you a breakdown of what you can expect with these decks. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the guide. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. And stay salty, my friends.